Full School on RealAgriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. All right, joining us here on Real Agriculture for this episode of the Pulse School, we're pleased to welcome Brody Erb. Brody is a research technician and master's student at the University of Manitoba, and he has a poster on display as part of uh, the Manitoba Agronomist Conference taking place at uh, the U of M this week. Brody, can you fill us in on uh, on your research looking at uh, at peas and some of the, I guess, factors that producers that growers are taking into consideration at this time of year as they look ahead to a, another growing season and uh, laying out those plans for growing a, a big pea crop next year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in recent, in the recent last decade, um, we've seen pea acreage increase um, back to levels that were seen in the late 90s. Um, and this is the result of, um, you know, different marketing options or opportunities for growers. Um, they also fit into crop rotations and I think producers are starting to look for um, a, a greater diversity of crop rotations. Um, so we are starting to see a higher acreage of peas. And so my research is focusing on agronomic factors of pea production and to kind of suss out best management practices for uh, pea growth. Um, and so, uh, the three of these factors include preceding residue. Um, so I'm looking at wheat or canola residue. Um, the second one is, um, residue management strategy. So whether that's tillage or, or zero till. And the third one is starter phosphorus application method. So that's uh, no phosphorus, side banded phosphorus, or seed place phosphorus. Um, currently, there's no standardization for um, all three of these factors when it comes to pea production in Manitoba. Um, for preceding residue, for example, um, based on some surveys, we see that um, peas are, are grown on wheat stubble about 30% of the time and canola stubble about 35% of the time. And this makes sense because canola and wheat are the major crops grown in Manitoba. Um, another example for the um, tillage aspect is we, we're starting to see more producers um, go towards the zero tillage practices um, based on some of the, the benefits that this system has um, on their overall production. Um, including soil physical properties, um, less fuel consumption, um, that sort of thing. And then um, the third example, um, starter phosphorus applications, um, based on other surveys, um, about 90% of producers do apply phosphorus um, with the seed as a starter phosphorus application. Um, but whether that's side banded or seed placed, um, that's usually split in half about 50, 50. Um, so my research is trying to combine all of these factors into, and try to stream them into a, a better, higher producing pea crop. So you have research now from the past three years and preceding residue looks like it's the, the clear, most impactful of those, of those three factors over those three years. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So um, my research, research has been done on, on uh, six different site years. So three sites at Carmen or three years at Carmen and three years at Roblin. Um, so far, I've only analyzed the Carmen data, but based on that preliminary data, it, it would seem that um, P yield has been most affected by preceding residue um, as opposed to the other two factors. And that's where wheat's uh, growing peas on on wheat, you've had a clear yield advantage over growing it on canola stubble? Yeah, that's right. So in 2021 and in 2023, um, peas significantly yielded better on wheat stubble rather than canola stubble. And in the other year, um, not significantly, but we uh, peas did uh, out yield on wheat residue in that year as well. Okay. 
do you have any theory or is there any uh, in terms of your diving into the the literature that's out there as to why peas may fare better on wheat than on uh, on canola yeah so peas are a mycorrhizal crop meaning that they have an association with mycorrhizae in the soil um, as a mechanism to um, increase phosphorus uptake to the plant roots. Um, wheat is also a host for mycorrhizae. Canola is a non-mycorrhizal crop. So um, the thought process thought process with that is that peas grown on wheat stubble should out yield um, peas grown on canola stubble because of that association and because of that greater networking opportunity following wheat stubble. Okay. Getting to the other two factors that you've looked at, uh, residue management, uh, not much of a, a difference there in terms of, uh, or a significant difference, I guess, in terms of, of yield uh, between the different uh, approaches to residue management? Yeah, that's right. So in one of the years in 2021, there was a significant effect of um, tillage strategy or uh, residue management strategy. Um, and that was the the peas out yield, uh, peas that were uh, planted into or direct seeded out yielded um, peas that were on tilled stubble. Um, the reason why I'm not so certain there was, um, if you can remember 2021 had a, a pretty dry uh, spring. So the moisture in um, direct seeded systems may have been greater for peas to establish better earlier in the year. Um, and then the other two years, there was no significant effect of um, residue management strategy on pea yield. Okay. What about uh, starter phosphorus? Uh, any significant learnings there in terms of, or differences in uh, in yields as a result of, of giving it that treatment? Yeah, so like I said, um, I tried no phosphorus uh, application, a starter phosphorus with that was uh, seed place and a starter phosphorus that was side banded. And these applications were at 20 pounds of phosph per acre. Um, based on the preliminary results at Carmen, there was no significant effect uh, between these three phosphorus applications. So to, to tie this together then, Brody, the earlier discussion about mycorrhizae and uh, wheat being a mycorrhizal host crop and, and canola not, uh, not having that relationship with the mycorrhizae in, in the soil, how does that tie in with the, uh, the effects of that starter phosphorus and, and having that uh, phosphorus uptake that the mycorrhizae provides? Yeah, so um, two of the factors have an influence on mycorrhizal colonization in the soil. Um, so starting with the preceding residue, wheat is a mycorrhizal crop, meaning that the subsequent year, um, we should see a higher colonization and networking in the soil, um, which should benefit peas and pea yield. Um, in terms of the tillage, tillage might have a disturbance factor on the colonization as well. Um, but when you when we're talking about um, starter phosphorus applications, um, the thought process is that um, these applications should have should be able to offset some of the negative impacts that preceding residue, like a canola residue, or um, tillage might have on the colonization of mycorrhizae. And and that would be, I guess, a similar thought process to uh, to corn and where corn growers, I know in, in Manitoba, after canola, there's there's often a, there can be a, that yield hit and you try to make it up with with a starter phosphorus. Are you are you saying this is a little bit more complicated than the than the corn hypothesis when it comes to mycorrhizae and, and early phosphorus uptake? Yeah, so so far, um so um a lot of the research is kind of um, coming off the back of, of the corn studies and some flax studies, but um, in this, so far, based on the preliminary data that I've accumulated in Carmen and analyzed, um, it's, yeah, it's really tough to say. I am seeing some significant effects uh, um, that are three-way, so meaning that um, there's a residue tillage and placement component 
um, in these effects. So I, um, I need to further analyze this this data and see what's really going on with it. Um, Cause it's, it's, yeah, it's tough to say uh, whether they have an, uh, an impact on, on P yield. Thanks for your time and your insight. We'll, uh, we'll stay tuned as you uh, further parse and dig into this, uh, into this research topic. Brody, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thank you, Kelvin.